What's up, people? Rip Beast Man 97 here. Welcome back to more Let's Play Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. In the last episode, we began our first dungeon, the Forsaken Fortress. We got the dungeon map. We got a piece of heart, uh, the first of many, and we also got the uh, compass. Now, uh, the start of this episode, you may notice that I'm backtracking a little bit, and that is because prior to starting my recording, I was just tooling around a little bit, uh, and I realized that I actually missed a searchlight. Um, so what you want to do is you want to come back over here, climb up this ladder, and we will get the searchlight that I missed. Um, I'm going to cut out the part where I'm running back because I don't want to waste uh, time. So uh, I just showed you guys how to get to here and you guys can find your own way home, uh, back. Um, so I uh, just pick up this pot. Uh, we'll try and hit him with it. Uh, no, it didn't work. Okay, well, we, all we succeeded to do was alert him to our presence. Oh, yes. Okay, so just whack him a few times with this stick. Um, ow. Oh, come on. This is frustrating. Okay, here we go. Alright, so, yeah, I in my last video I said it took six hits to take him out. Um, it actually only takes five with the stick to take him out. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, there's my edit right there. So we're back in this room. Um, just jump across, swing across the, ro the room with on the rope. Um, head on through this door. And just go on out here and we will get our nice little cutscene and we will go take out this guy the last uh, thing of search lights uh, shouldn't be that difficult considering we've done it so many uh, two other ones I guess two is not a whole lot but uh yeah just grab this pot of sticks and you can take it, t and uh, we're gonna hit him with it since it does two sticks, stick hits worth of damage. Um, so uh, yeah, just hit him, he'll fall down, hit him again, and hit him one more time, and that will do it for this guy. And let's head on down. Ooh, oh. And just head him down here. Uh, head on inside this room. And basically it's just like most of the other rooms. You just want to wait until it's in position. Swing across. Head on out. And we will come to... I think this is where you push... Yeah, this is it. Okay, so in case you ever fall down... Um, like when you're doing the rest of the dungeon this is just in insurance so you won't have to go through the entire dungeon again uh, you want to push this block come on what what the heck oh, oh uh, yeah that's right I'm used to playing Ocarina of Time controls uh, you need to hold uh, on down on R uh, to push not A okay all right, now that makes sense. Okay, um, just climb on up here, back up after you've pushed it into position. Oh, I always have such problems climbing up the ladders for some reason. Um, yeah, just push it into position, climb back up, head on over here, open this door, go on through. This room can be sort of difficult uh, because of these guards. If they see you when you don't have a when you don't have a sword, um, then they will throw you in prison. This is where the uh, yellow, I think it's the C stick, that comes real handy because you can see around things by uh, switching the view a little bit with that. Um, yeah, just run on past them when their backs are turned. Uh, make sure they're a little bit away from you. Don't go like right behind them because they might hear you and turn around and get you anyway. So uh, that would be good. So just roll on up here. 
and there's a guard up here so be careful uh, you can grab this uh, barrel right here hide underneath of it if you need to so just move on over here go and just basically you just have to wait until oop, until uh, he comes and goes by you uh, I love it how you can still see when you're underneath the barrel. I mean, that'd be pretty useful to have in real life. Okay, so once he starts going back, you can go ahead and start moving. Although I'd wait just to be really safe since you can't really go by him until he's moved all the way out of the way anyway. Uh, but, uh, yeah, once he starts heading to the right like that, you can just head on over. Um, drop the barrel <coughs> and run up here there we go and right here you want to oop um, come back up alright you can press R I mean A uh, when you're up against the wall and you will like slide like you you go up tight against the wall and just like slide along uh, very stealthy like so you can walk on this very small ledge and you can walk across and then you're gonna have to do it again there are some nice little hearts here so if you need hearts like I need a heart um, then you can pick these up you're, you're gonna pick these up anyway because you're going across the ledge and you can't not pick them up. So uh, just go ahead and do that. Go across here. Um, and we are getting really close to the end of the dungeon. That's pretty cool. So just head on up here. Whee! We got our sword back. Link looks pretty happy about it. Uh oh. Yeah, that is a green Boko blend. Um, roll over here and grab the sword. Yeah, these guys can be uh, somewhat challenging for a newer player, uh, but you know that you shouldn't have that much trouble with them. Um, yeah, they take uh, considerably more hits than the uh, blue Boko blends do to uh, take out. But uh, you know, eight hits, I think, and. That's about it. Uh, again, the jump attack is worth two hits. So, yeah. Get a couple of those in there and you should have them done in no time. Anyway, just head on in here once you've killed him. Um, and we will get a cutscene. Where Link sees his sister. Has to squint in order to see her though. Something's wrong. <coughs> Big humongous bird. Crap. <coughs> well, that was a miserable attempt at rescue. You lost your sword. Finally, just pick up your sword, and now you get your butt kicked by a big giant bird. Yeah, not a very good day for Link, that's for sure. is floating in the middle of the ocean. Well, anyway, guys, um, I'm just about out of time. So uh, I will see you guys in the next video. So uh, see you later.